Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about zipper organization, Shannon Cuddle fabrics. The book review will be for a book called Hand Dyed. I'll be demonstrating how to add a zipper tab with a snap attached to it and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I saw everyone chatting before the show. I see Amanda's watching from Canada. Donna from, um, also Canada from Ontario. Clovis is also watching. So thank you everyone so much for joining me. Before I get started, a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you and everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. I see Barb's watching also. Good evening to you, Barb. All right, so kicking off the show, my very favorite portion is the notion of the week. And this week I started doing some organization in the sewing room and part of that organization was getting my zippers organized. So previously I kept my zippers in two plastic containers with lids and it was always really tricky when I was looking for a certain color. I would always rifle through the bins and hope that I grabbed the color that I needed and the size that I needed and so I decided to switch my zippers over to, I did a bit of searching on Amazon and I found these they're, they're racks meant for holding ties, men's ties, and I thought it would be really cool for holding the zippers instead. So I bought two racks, one for my cool colors, which you see here, and one for the warm colors. And I actually wanted to jump over to the side camera and show you this um, a little bit more close up and how I got the zippers on here. Okay, so let me, all right, I'm gonna lay that down right there. So. I, because I love rainbows, I went ahead and organized these in rainbow color order. And as you can see, I just um, organized all the zippers by color. I folded them in half. I just put a rubber, rubber band around just to kind of create that loop over there. And then the, the zipper just hooks onto um, the metal on the zipper rack. So I'm actually going to be using command strips to hang this on the wall. Um, not command hooks, so the, the strips I'm using are just the strips that stick to the wall and also to the back of the rack. And obviously you wanna make sure that you get strong enough command strips to hold um, the rack. So I got the medium size and the large and I'm just gonna test it out. But anyway, I, I kinda think it's cool. I like having this on the wall because using up the wall space frees up more room in the sewing area. Like I can use those plastic containers for something else. And I just feel like it looks really pretty um, hanging on the racks and I'm going to enjoy looking at the all of the zippers on the wall. So again, I linked to in the description the exact tie rack that I got, but Amazon does have a varying selection of different looks. Um, not all of them are made of wood, but um, check it out if you're interested in a different uh, storage solution for the zippers that you have in your sewing room. So actually yesterday my friend Vanessa was in town from Florida, which was appropriate since of course it snowed all day yesterday. It was kind of like a, a, I think they categorized it in Chicago as a snow warning, winter storm warning. Um, but here's a couple photos Danny's gonna put up on the screen. You may know Vanessa, I'm sure you do. She's the crafty Gemini. So there's me and Vanessa. We went out for lunch and her friend Regla came with her from Florida as well. So we went to an Indian restaurant. We, we did go to one quilt shop. I wanted to do um, more quilt shops in the day but the snow was literally coming down really hard and driving on the expressway with all that snow coming down really fast was um, not ideal so we just went to the one quilt shop in the restaurant but it was tons of fun and if you're not familiar with the crafty gemini linked to her website in the description i hope you'll check her out she's got tons tons more videos than i'll ever have and uh, she's on youtube she's got videos on her website as well so um, fantastic selection of projects so i have a question for you let me know, let's chat about it. Um, have you ever met anyone from online in real life? So I know that's the case for many of you that are um, joining in the local meetups. So the state and the country groups are having meetups. I'll actually be sending out a newsletter tonight after the show with 
more updated meetups that will be happening, including some in Australia, which is really exciting. Um, the first time I met a sewing friend in real life, um, actually I do, I do greatly enjoy meeting other sewing people um, in real life because I feel like I have something to talk about. I'm usually really quiet and clam up, but when we can talk about sewing, I feel like I'm much more myself and so I really enjoy doing that. Um, so if you haven't yet met anyone in real life from the Sew Sweetness group, I hope you will one day have a chance to do that because it's tons of fun. And uh, yeah, I had a great time with Vanessa and her friend Regla yesterday. It was, it was super awesome. Um, so the fabric that I've added to my stash this week is actually um, something that I don't normally buy, but Danny saw me pulling it out and getting it ready for the show and he thought I was making uh, a nice fuzzy quilt for him, but it actually, um, I was planning to make stuffed animals. Um, so I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you these fabrics. Uh, these are actually manufactured by Shannon Fabrics. They have lots of different varieties of minky. I actually purchased these on Etsy um, from Cali Quilt Company. So that's uh, their business card in there. And I, I bought two different kinds of minky. So I'm gonna lay the two different types side by side and explain the difference. So the dark gray on the left is Shannon Fabrics. Right. Uh, sorry, the right, thank you, Danny. <laughs> the fabric on the right is the Cuddle Hide, H-I-D-E. And the Cuddle Hide has like a variant, as you can see, it has the swirls over here. The one on the left is also by Shannon Fabrics, but it's um, their Cuddle, number three, cuddle three, and it's a flatter. It doesn't have as as long of a, a hair as the one on the right does, the hide. And the reason I purchased two different types is because I was thinking of making stuffed animals. So my friend, Teresa, actually works for Shannon Fabrics. I purchased these myself, but I do, some, I do know someone who works for the company. I've known Teresa for years, and she suggested um, the cuddle hide which is this one right here for the body of the stuffed animals. She says the reason for that is because it has this swirly texture. Texture It hides your stitches or your joins, like your seams, really well. Um, this one over here I purchased because I there were some stuffed animals, like for example, like a lamb or a llama's face that I wanted the, the face to be the smoother, shorter uh, minky fabric. So that's why I purchased this one. So I got a lot of different colors because I didn't know exactly which stuffed animal I was gonna start with. So I'll show you some of the other colors that I got. Um, I'm not sure, Danny, if you need to zoom out when I start stacking these out, but some of these are really pretty colors. This one's like a, a really light pink over here. Here's another of the Cuddle 3. This is a really light gray. And these would be great for baby quilts as well, like the back of the baby quilt. Um, of course, Danny would like this backing for a quilt of his own. Um, but the cuddle comes in different variations. These are just the, the two particular varieties that I purchased to use for the stuffed animals because I thought, like I said, I thought that I'm not an expert at sewing stuffed, stuffed animals, so I thought the texture would be my friend in this case. So there's some bright colors as well. I'm not sure what stuffed animal I'll make with this hot pink, but I just thought it was really cool. And I think there's a couple others. I'll, I'll show you the rest of the colors. Most of the colors are neutrals, but I did pick a few actual colors as well, like these pinks over here. Okay, so again, these are manufactured by Shannon Fabrics, and I actually linked to just a generic uh, search for Shannon Fabrics Cuddle Fabrics on Etsy, just because there's so many different variations available, and I just wanted you to be able to see all of your options over there. So again, the link is in the description. So this past Friday, I spent most of the day tearing, um, not tearing, but like taking all of the fabric down off my shelves behind me and uh, folding all the fabric onto comic books. And so I, I'm not even halfway done, um, but it was kind of enjoyable just to do something mindless. Um, as you can see behind me, the, these two stacks over here are on the comic book boards. So are those two over there. Um, this stack right here obviously is not, and you can tell the difference. So um, let me just pull this off the shelf so they stack up really nicely i use the comic book boards which you can see probably right there there's the board and i used plastic alligator clips to hold the fabric on to the board you don't necessarily need to use clips to hold it on but i like the idea of having the clips and i didn't want to use anything metal like pins or metal clips because i was worried over time in case the the metal rusted so that's why i decided to go with the plastic and 
Uh, I feel like it's a bit of a space saver. Um, I, I felt like I folded kind of neatly before, um, but I certainly, I certainly think my shelves are a bit neater uh, being on those comic book boards. So I had to order more clips. I ran out of the plastic alligator clips, but I got some more today. So I'll be maybe tomorrow folding some more of the fabric because it, you can't see it, but it's all on the ground over here behind me. You can't even walk in here. So um, it's a bit of a shambles, but I hope to have it in order sometime later in the week. So um, let me know. Uh, be proud about it. Uh, if you are a bag lady or bag dude, and I certainly love seeing um, that come through the feed. I love the bag making community. As I mentioned earlier, I'm sending a newsletter out later tonight, and at the bottom of the newsletter will be some meetups happening in May or in early June. And so if you're in the area of any of those meetups, I hope you'll take that opportunity to meet some other group members in person. Some of the Meetups are at um, quilt shows uh, for dinner. A few of them are all day for like a in-person sew along. And so I think that's really fun. And um, yeah, just check out that newsletter later tonight. So my book review for this week is a book that I just happened upon on social media. It's a new book called Hand Dyed. And so I thought it was something a little bit different and interesting. And so I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and, and show you Hand Dyed. Okay, so the book is written by Anna Joyce. It's a hardback book. And the book gives you basic instructions and some inspiration for hand dyeing your fabric. So I've hand dyed some fabric before in the past. Um, I, when I sit down, I'll try to grab it. It's on my shelf behind me. I didn't think about that before the show. Um, but it walks you through the basic materials and um, instructions for how to hand dye your fabric. It's actually a pretty fun process and interesting, and you can hand dye different designs in your fabric as well. So um, all of the terminology for the hand dye dyeing is included in the book. All the supplies that you'll need. Um, there's just some a few basic supplies that I ordered um, online. It's been some years since I hand dyed fabric, but um, it was relatively easy to find all of the things that I needed to for the hand dyeing. So here's just a, a photograph of some of the supplies. So um, in photographs and in instructions, um, the author gives information on how to hand dye yourself, different recipes, this one's for indigo, and uh, dip dyeing, all sorts of things are mentioned over here. And then also I like that there's instruction given for uh, different designs, like right here, this is accordion folds. It just depends on how you, uh, bundle up the fabric before you dye it. Scrunch, and this is what it looks like. This is twisting. Triangles, this one's pretty cool. So th that's folded as a triangle. This one's a grid. So there's a lot of options that I didn't even realize as far as the different designs that you can make uh, when hand dyeing. Even stamping in the dye as well. That looks really awesome. Um, and then the second half of the book, oh, let's let's go through the colors as well. Of course, different color options. Here's a few examples of the colors. They're really pretty. The blues are really bright and vibrant. And then the second half of the book is actually different projects. So there's, unfortunately, there's no actual sewing instructions to make these projects, but these are just inspiration for um, specific projects like this wrap. So in this case, you'll need to purchase the wrap first before you dye it. I'm just gonna flip through a couple of these because these are, like I said, they're not sewing instructions. Uh, but just different ideas for what to do with your with your dye. And the, the whole entire rest of the book is a similar nature to this, just inspiration for different projects. Okay, so again, this is called Hand Dyed. I felt it was very thorough without being overwhelming. And like I said, you, you really just need the, the basic supplies and how to get started. It's not super hard, um, but it's a fun process. Let me see if I could find the fabric behind me. Uh, I don't see it. Maybe later in the show, if I can glance over there, I'll, I'll pull it down off the shelf and show you. So I have a, a question for you. Let's chat about this. Have you ever tie-dyed a t-shirt or dyed any other fabric? So I think probably a lot of people have tie-dyed a t-shirt before. Um, it actually looks easier than it is. I remember recently, it was just a few months ago, Violet and I tie-dyed some t-shirts with this uh, little crafty kit that we found online for dyeing. And um, 
it's harder than it looks. We let the dye set overnight and I felt like it wasn't super permanent, so I'm not sure if we did anything wrong, but tie dyeing is really fun to experiment with different colors and the overlapping of colors. And I feel like that's part of the interesting process in that hand dyeing of the fabric as well. So my demonstration for tonight is a really quick demonstration, but it's something that was asked, I think this past week on the Tuesday show, um, someone asked about, so some bags like this Clyde Bank tote have zipper tails at the end. So let me unzip the bag and show you what I mean by the zipper tail. So here's the zipper tail over here. So the question was, is it possible to add a snap over here and either snap it in the lining just to keep it secure or you could use it as a decorative function on the outside of your bag. Perhaps you have like a, a, a zipper panel going across the top of your bag that you want to kind of snap at the end. For example, the Emblem Duffel Bag has tabs on the end that you could perhaps um, use as a decorative feature and snap that down instead or make it more permanent by instead of having a snap using either a rivet or a Chicago screw. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about in tonight's demonstration. So let me jump over to the side camera and I'm going to get my iron heated up and we'll talk about how to get this finished. So here's a finished one that I completed. As you can see, there's a snap over here. Obviously, you'll need to use the female portion of the snap somewhere on your bag, either in the lining, which was what the question was from Tuesday, or um, on the outside of your bag, depending on where you want it. So this is what it, it looks like. As you can see, super simple. So what you'll need for this project, obviously you'll need your zipper. You can either use a handbag zipper, which is what I used for uh, my sample, or you can use a number three dress skirt zipper. And you'll need two pieces of fabric. So I cut each piece of fabric six inches by two inches, and it finishes with a small little square. If you'd like to have a longer tab as part of your uh, modification, obviously you'll cut that longer. But I cut my two pieces six inches by two inches and I cut a piece of shape flex and then the fabric that I wanted to use. So go ahead and you'll fuse that fabric to the interfacing. And this is the resulting piece. So we're gonna start off by flipping to the wrong side and I'm gonna draw a line to the inside of each of the long edges by a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna use those two lines to press toward the wrong side of the fabric. Or if you have a hot ruler, you can just use your hot ruler and instead of marking the lines, you can just go ahead and press those straight off. So I'm gonna press the lines toward the wrong side at the line. And then after I do that, I'm going to press kind of like double fold bias tape or kind of like how we do most of the straps. So I'm gonna press it in half so that the short ends meet. Okay, and then I'm gonna press both of the short ends in toward the center crease. Okay, so I'm gonna put a couple wonder clips just to hold this edge while I complete the opposite end. And then I'm also gonna fold this end toward the center crease. Okay, so I'm gonna repress everything and then by doing that, all of the raw edges will be enclosed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it in place for a second with the wonder clips. All right, so you'll need to decide which end of the zipper you're going to put the tab on. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this end. So instead of, normally I go ahead and place the zipper all the way in toward the center crease. This time I'm just going to overlap it by no more than a half inch. The reason for that is we wanna have this end free for the snap. So we don't wanna be inserting a snap through the zipper teeth or the zipper tape. So I'm gonna use, again, use the wonder clips to hold the edges, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and take this to the machine and top stitch the outer edge of the fabric using an eighth of an inch. So that's what I've done here. And then you'll just use your snap inserting tool. I actually used a snap setter tool for this and a hammer. So I have a video for installation instructions in case you're interested in the snap setter, but you can use whatever snaps you have on hand. Or like I mentioned, you can use um, either a rivet or a Chicago screw. And then in that case, if you use the rivet or Chicago screw, this will be permanent. But if you use the snap, you can unsnap it and uh, open it and close it as you wish. So again, that was uh, how to insert uh, a, a snap into a zipper tab, kind of as a, 
a decorative and useful function for your loose ends of uh, the zipper tabs on your bags. All right, so I first wanted to announce uh, the winner of last week's giveaway, which is Stephanie Peterson. So congratulations to you, Stephanie. I have another giveaway uh, for the end of the show, but I wanted to talk about something first. Um, and we're actually gonna skip the questions for tonight. We just, we just decided we would, so sorry about that. Um, okay, let me start off by saying I, I hate to disappoint anyone, um, and this was a hard decision to make, but we've decided to take a really short hiatus from the live shows. Uh, I intend it to be as short as possible, but I feel like I've been struggling lately, um, maybe the past week, maybe a little bit more. I know everyone has ups and downs, and I always feel like I've always been able to bounce back from the downs like in a day or so, but I don't know. I just... The, down, the downs have been collecting and like, I feel like, a, like an, I have a constant knot in my chest lately and I feel like I just need to, I decided to find someone to talk to, to um, therapy to get some help and I feel like I just needed a short break and so, um, we're just going to take a really short break from the live shows. Um, I decided nothing else will change. So I'll, I'll still be answering emails like I always do. Orders will still going, be going out like normal. Um, I'll still be on social media. So I'm still going to be here. I just felt like we need to, uh, I love doing the live shows and I know I put a ton of effort into them and I just felt like there's just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, looking for a house and like it's just not happening and I just feel like I need to take a short break and get back to normal so I don't know how long the break will be I know it'll be as short as I can possibly make it but um, we'll keep you updated on social media as far as how long that'll be um, I just want to make sure I take long enough because I don't want to take another break so for example the next time I take another break, like I hope it's because I'm taking a break because I'm going somewhere fun like Disney World and not because, uh, <laughs> not because I uh, need to put everything back in place. But um, I, what else did I want to let you know? Um, I'm hoping we can still have the book club in the middle of May as scheduled, but in case we need to delay that by like a week or two, um, I wanted to let you know that uh, the month four books book club selection is the, going to be the gown so just in case i need to delay book club by a week or two um just so everyone uh can access the fourth book and read it uh in time for month four so again that'll be the gown by jennifer robson i still plan on uh, for the rest of the year all the patterns and videos that i had planned that i wanted to do i still plan on follow, you know doing those um, so again, the only thing that's changing is the live shows. We're just taking a short break. Everything else uh, that you've come to expect from So Sweetness will stay the same. I'm still here to help with if you have a question via email and everything else. So uh, I hope you understand. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get all emotional there, but um, uh, yeah, I just I, I just want everything to be back to the way it was, and I know I know we can get there. So. Uh, thanks for your support and um, on that note uh, I felt like we should skip the questions for tonight because I wasn't sure if uh, I'd be able to make it through questions but I did still want to have a giveaway um, the giveaway prize for this week is I was going through my stash and I found these fabrics that I thought I don't know sometimes I hang on to things just for sentimental reasons even though I'm not really sure what to do with them so I wanted to give away this stack of Melody Miller fabrics if you're not familiar with Melody Miller, she does tons of like vintage -y type designs. And so I wanted to show you, most of these are out of print already, but they're pretty special. So that's why I wanted someone from the audience to hopefully be able to use them to make some great bags. So I'm just gonna briefly show the fabrics included in the giveaway and then I'll let you know how to enter the giveaway. So this one's a really cool like Christmas, it's got like vintage glasses on it and they all have like Christmas decorations. So that's pretty cool. Um, this one has uh, 
like tape recorders on it. It's metallic. This one I actually use for uh, a moto pouch. Let me open it up just so you can see the design. Um, it's like retro, it's got like retro ladies faces on it um, and like florals and stuff. So this one's really cool also. I showed you the this one already. I think this one is the designer's grandmother. Um, it's a really large print, but again, it's like a, reminds me of like a vintage photograph. So that's, that's a pretty cool fabric. It's a really big print. Um, here's another colorway of the, the ladies' faces. I don't know why I, you know, I've used the ladies' faces on a few projects, bags and things, and I, I don't know why I just kept buying it. So that's why I have some, some left in my stash. This one's uh, like a vintage, some vintage ladies um, and there's metallic text print all over it. Uh, what else do I have here? Here's some like vintage Tupperware looking pieces on there. I have a lot of this fabric, so I'm okay giving away this rather large scrap, but here's some uh, Mustangs on this fabric. Um, some like vintage records and this one right here. I think there's several yards of this, so this is enough to make lots of different projects or um, upholstery for a chair or something like that. So to enter the giveaway for all of this fabric, all you have to do is let me know in the comments the answer to this question and I will draw the giveaway. Even though we're not doing a live show next Sunday, I'll still draw the giveaway at the end of the day Saturday and contact the winner on social media. So all you have to do is answer this question either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch the live shows. And my question is, uh, what's your favorite breakfast food? So just go ahead and let me know. Uh, what your favorite breakfast food is. I always eat cereal at home, but if we go out to eat for breakfast, I, I like a Belgian waffle with strawberries. So thank you so much for watching Social Sunday this week. Sorry to get all emotional earlier. Um, I will certainly let everyone know on social media and in the newsletter when we'll be back for the live shows. And like I mentioned, the book club selection for no book number four, just in case we're not back in time, is the gown, but we will still have the book club selections, the book club free patterns, all that. Um, nothing else will change. So thank you again for your understanding. Thanks for watching the show and I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.